Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Busco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. So at the end of last year, I reviewed six different Cabernet Sauvignons from Chile. To start off this year, I'm going to review eight different Sauvignon Blancs from Chile. This is a free sample provided to me, and I have no restrictions on how I review it. If you want to get a more detailed explanation of Chilean wine, then check out my first episode of the Cab Series, episode 99, about the Miguel Torres Cordillera de las Cabernet Sauvignon. The link for that will be below in the description. This is the seventh wine in this series. It comes from Vina Garces Silva. Let's get their background. The website states that the family has a long lasting tradition which spans many generations and developed a deep bond with the land via agricultural activities. It goes on to state that this bond led them to consider joining the wine industry. So I'm guessing that they've been growers for a while, though not sure how long as a family. Also, I'm guessing it was other produce, but transitioned to grapes relatively recently. I know there's olive trees on, or at least adjacent to, the property. We do know that the first vines were planted in 1999. They say they were pioneers of Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir in the Leda Valley. The winery was founded in 2002, and this is the first winery in the Leda Valley. They are certified Chile sustainable certified sorry they are certified Chile certified sustainable it's kind of a weird way to say it but they're certified sustainable in Chile and appear very committed to that sustainability they make two main lines of wine this one Amina and Boya they have a total of 175 hectares of vineyards all in the same area across four plots or that's how I mapped it out making my best guess the vineyard ranges from 6.8 to 8.7 miles from the Pacific Ocean. Of those, 27 hectares are exclusively for the Amaya line of wines and 22 hectares exclusively for the Boya line. The rest they sell. Soils, uh, mostly granite with clay. There is a third new line from the vineyard they planted 10-ish years ago um, in the Mali Valley. They call that Catalina. They are a gravity-fed winery, meaning there are no pumps starting with the grape all the way to the barrel. Gravity is what moves all of it rather than pumps. They use mostly stainless steel tanks for fermentation with a select amount of wine fermented in barrel or large foudres. All barrels are French, but no indication of how much is new, at least not with this wine. They have a capacity of production of 370,000 liters in stainless with an additional 110,000 liters in French oak barrels. Not sure they max this out every year though. The Amaya line, the, the Amina line, produces a total of 25,000 cases per year. Lastly, if you watched the first episode of the series, then the name of the winery should ring a bell. It's one of the six families that control the Montez Wine Company. Okay, let's get into the stats of this wine. The 2020 Vigna Garces Silva Amina Sauvignon Blanc, suggested retail price $25. The Valle de Leda D.O., the Garces Silva Estate Vineyard, 100% Sauvignon Blanc. Soil is a limestone clay. Yield is 3.64 tons per acre, listed as 9 tons per hectare. Plant density is 5,000 plants per hectare. Hand harvested, cold fermentation in stainless steel tanks for, the text sheet says 110 to 15 days, I don't know. Even for a red wine, it's a long time. I'm thinking it's closer to 10 to 15 hours, just because of how the text sheet printed it. Uh, it's aged on leaves for 6 months. ABV is 14%, the text sheet says 13.9. Uh, the pH is 3.19. The total, total acidity is 6.71 grams per liter. The RS is 1.8 grams per liter. The total production uh, for this wine is 5,230 bottles. All right, let's get into the wine. All right, for a little inside baseball, this is the last wine I'm doing today. I already did wine number eight for like an hour ago. All right. <clears throat> I'm super excited to have the wine and then finish this set and go have lunch. Woo! And the wine's still cool to the touch, the bottle is. Um, it's not ice cold, 
which I'm glad it's not. I mean, these wines have been sitting out in the fridge since nine something. And it's close to one o'clock. So, I mean, they stayed pretty good temperature wise. Old, old school. I will always evaluate white wines at room temperature. All right, let's check it out. Kind of reminds me of an airline, like like in, when you're inside an airplane. I don't know why. I'm also going to be getting maybe fatigue. This is wine number eight. Though, I mean, I've had hundreds of wines in, in a, in a two-hour setting, but that's a little different. It's aromatically, not a ton going on right now. I get that feeling of being on an airplane. I got a whiff of some bell pepper. I'm getting a little bit of citrusy type of thing. There's a little chalkiness to it. Let's just get it on the palate. Chalkiness again. That's kind of like the first thing that I'm getting more of a sensation on the mouth, a grippiness to it. Um, there is a bit of that orange, like a, like a like a crushed orange thing, like a fun dip, but it's tart, right? Not sweet. So I get that like an orange flavored powder. It's tart, refreshing. I mean, all the Sauvignon Blanc has been tart. So I didn't really say tart very much throughout the, and crisp and light. They're all pretty much that way. That's kind of expected. You know, I like the wine. It tastes good. And again, it might be just, you know, this is the last of the wines and I'm, I'm, I'm already thinking about having lunch. So maybe I'm not being fair to the wine. Let's give myself a little bit more here. But I, I just kind of feel like there's I'm missing something in here. Maybe it's it's in the wine. I'm, I'm missing it, or maybe it's just not in the wine. So here's the deal. It tastes really good. But if I was handed this, I wouldn't know what it was. I would probably be throwing this in like an Albarino category. It's because it's just a high presence of orange to it. And I really don't get any green, which is fine. You know, Sauvignon Blanc doesn't have to hit you over the head with bell pepper and jalapeno. Um, just like Gruner Veltliner doesn't need to hit you over the head with white pepper. Um, or Chilean Carmenere and Cabernet Sauvignon doesn't have to hit you on, on the, over the head with, you know, that type of you know, bell pepper and jalapeno to either. It's, and the thing is, as I'm talking, it's coming through. I feel like this is a wine that, that, kind of like one of the other wines in the series, I feel like it needs more exposure. But it's weird because this is not quite room temperature, but it's pretty warm. So I should be getting lots of stuff. And also, when you evaluate a wine at this, at this temperature level, any flaws in the wine will come through. There are no flaws. This, this, this is a flawless wine. So, I mean, we have excellent winemaking going on here. This is a wine I feel like I would just grab it if I just want something nice and refreshing and tasty, but I don't have to think about it, which that's what you want to be anyway. But like, it's, I'd say it's not memorable. Like, it's like, oh, it's pleasant. And I'd, I'd buy it. Like I would, like if I saw this on, on a, on a restaurant wine list, as long as it wasn't like stupidly expensive, which it probably would be. Um, I'd be like, oh yeah, it tastes good. I'll just have that. And so let's talk about food. Maybe, maybe if I had it paired with food, we would, we would be in a better situation. I think because of how it comes across as being kind of really a light, um, very light and just enjoyable, almost like a porch pounder, that I would probably have this with like salad. I would have this as the beginning of a meal before I even had anything to get the juices going. Um, maybe with like a, like a, a, a salad, with, maybe throw in the grapefruit to it, like a, a salad, like a, a spinach salad, maybe with a little, little tiny little things of grapefruit in there or orange, it's like that, you know, that type of citrusy thing. I get the citrus for sure. Um, with like a, with like a raspberry vinaigrette or something like that. I could see doing something like that with this wine. It will pair well with that. Um, the bitterness of say like spinach or even like a kale salad. I'm not like a huge kale fan, but occasionally, you know, why not get really bitter? This would, I think would, 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 um, would enhance, not enhance the bitter, but would, would balance, would, would go well with, pair well with that. Um, yeah, I think, I think if you had the right food, as I have like a really itchy eye, I'm sorry about that. Um, 
I think it would go well with that. There's more complexity to it as I taste it more and more. But I think it's a food, it, it, you can drink it on its own, but I think the food would, like a couple of the other ones in the series, would really enhance things. Like it would open up. And I think it's a little bit shy. I think it's a shy wine that kind of needs, you know, won't, won't be the first on the dance floor, but once there are other people on the dance floor, it would be like, yo, what's going on? Like, I got this, right? Like, it would be noticeable, I think, at that point. I, 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 just, yeah, I just think it's just something that just kind of needs a little bit of encouragement to, to open up and, and be more noticeable. With that said, it's a very pleasant wine. It goes down really nice. Well, I didn't drink any of it, but it'll go down really nice. Uh, throw some food, like a salad or a lighter fare type of thing with it, and you'd be good to go. All right, that's going to do it for today's show. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, and we'll then tell your friends, and we'll see you next time.